Praise the Lord, Brother Timmons here of Christ Church International. Hope you're having a blessed Lord's Day. I want to bring you a special message today. It may be quite lengthy, but I can assure you it'll be worth your while to view because it's going to be dealing with a, an area that's not much is known about. Very few people know much about it at all, and it has to do with the dream world and attacks that may come against you in the dream world. But first I want to say, you know, if you, uh, you can visit our website, www.ccipublishing.net, and we have an online bookstore there. You can order books that will help you in your spiritual walk, and there are teaching articles archived there that will help you and your understanding of the word and your understanding of what you're called to do and your gifts and callings, things of that nature. Because our purpose in being here is to help you, my brother and sister. And you can also email us at Christ underscore church underscore INT at yahoo.com. That's the ministry general email. It's been our email for I don't know, 30 years or so. And today I'm going to be talking to you about the dream world, and I want to jump right into it because, as I said, it's going to be rather lengthy. You know, of the 23 ways I found from Scripture that God speaks to us, one of the ways, primary ways, is through dreams or night visions, as they're called in the Scriptures. That's when God speaks to you. And he does this by A, direct speech, or B, dark speech. And if you're not familiar with dark speech, I discuss it in my book, The Prophetic Voice. And it talks about the prophet's office because prophets also prophesy a lot in dark speech. And dark speech actually is the language of the spirit. Paul doesn't call it that in 1 Corinthians 2, but that's what he's speaking about is it's the language of the Holy Spirit, dark speech. So you need to understand it in order to be able to interpret your dreams if they're in dark speech, which most of the time they are, or they may be in a combination of direct and dark speech. But now you have to remember that if God wants to communicate with you in dreams, then Satan's going to try to interfere with that, isn't he? And he has his own methods of attacking us. And he has his own methods of bringing uh, dreams. So sometimes we call them nightmares or, or terror. Or, or he, you can actually be attacked in the dream world. I'm going to talk about that a little bit from my own experience. So Satan not only interferes with your dreams from God, but he can also attack you in the dream world. Sometimes physically... You know, I've given a testimony before. If you've watched all of our videos, you'll remember it. But I learned when uh, I was ministering at a church in Oklahoma and staying with a, we were staying with a woman who was widowed, and and uh, she put us in the bedroom. And and when I got up for breakfast the next morning, she was sitting at the table drinking coffee in her house coat, and as normal people, you know, make small talk she says well how'd you did you sleep okay and i said no i said i had to fight a devil for three hours and i told her how i got attacked by this spirit that made me it, it was just a, and i don't get headaches i rarely get a headache and i never never had a migraine in my life but i had one that night and i fought that thing i knew it was demonic for three hours and her mouth dropped open and she said that was my husband's bedroom and he died of a stroke in there so I learned even here in America that you, know, you, you have to cleanse the places that you visit, cleanse them spiritually because these demonic forces will hang around and they'll attack you, especially in the night. That's where, why they're called rulers of darkness. The evil spirits rule. They get have more power when there's less light. Praise the Lord. And then sometimes you can be attacked spiritually. You know, the first time I went to uh, Benin City, Nigeria, I was attacked by witches when I was dreaming, when I was sleeping. And th there was a group of them, about five or six or seven, 
and they had they had control of me and they put up an IV in my arm right here and it was a it was a spiritual IV and they were trying to make me go down this river in other words you know we're, we're going to be talking about water spirits today but I was being attacked in the dream world by witches and they put this spiritual IV in my arm that manifested physically the next day I, my when I woke up my body was covered with huge brown splotches all over my body and then these warts began to grow up around my heart area and it showed me that whatever medicine they tried to use to kill me you know it attacked my heart but it only manifested in these these warts which I rebuked and rebuked and I had to keep continue to rebuke those things for years because they would they would manifest and I'd rebuke them and they'd go away and sometimes it took weeks or even a month, but they'd always go away, and then they didn't come back for probably 10 years, and then they manifested again with the same result. But my point is that I was attacked in the dream world by witches. Now, I was also attacked in the dream world when Omo Bajesu and I did a crusade up in Kaduna, over the northern part of Nigeria. I was attacked by a red witch. I never sensed any presence of it, of the witch, but I began to manifest these horrible symptoms. I mean, it felt like the flu 20 times over, but I, I don't get the flu. I haven't had the flu since, since I found out about divine healing in 1978. And I've never been to a hospital in my life except to pray for people. So I couldn't go to the crusade that night. I, I, I if I hadn't known by the Spirit I was, wasn't going to die, I would have thought I was going to die. It was that bad. It was that, and then the, the Holy Spirit revealed to me I was being attacked by a red witch. And she was in the house there, and she confessed the next day. So Satan can attack you in the dream world. We're going to be talking about that because you need to be able to protect yourself against these type of attacks. And you need, need to be able to hear from God. In your dreams, a lot of times people, I've given testimony of people we prayed for at our church said, well, I don't ever dream. Well, would you like to? Because God wants to communicate, I believe, with everyone. And if you're not receiving spiritual dreams from the Lord, my brother and sister, it's probably a sign that there's a spiritual blockage there that needs to be deal, dealt with through deliverance. Praise the Lord. So, you can be attacked, and, and you know, our son John, uh, we had to deal with a situation with him a few years ago, a spirit of perversion that manifested, and it had to be in the bloodline because you know, there, there was no, it manifested itself in, uh, in constipation, and uh, I mean, life-threatening constipation was so serious, and, and we dealt with it through deliverance ministry and cast that thing out but it was it identified itself as a spirit of perversion so satan can attack you and he does it he does it a lots of times in the dream world when we're sleeping or he tries to prevent god from talking to us i know one time years ago actually it was 2007 and and i was praying and, and the lord began to talk to me when he did satan came and I actually had a fist fight with Satan and he was trying to prevent the Lord from speaking to me. So you're going to be attacked, especially if you want to do something for God. But even if you don't, Satan's going to attack you if you're a Christian because he hates you and the devils hate you. They don't want, they don't want us to, to obtain what they lost through their rebellion. So these things are real, and God wants you to know how to deal with these attacks so that you can keep your family safe and, and strong and or your church. You know, we, God will speak to you if you're a pastor or a minister and you have people under your care. You know, I remember years ago at our church when the Lord gave me a, a night vision of a woman in our church, and, and I saw these doctors, and, and they were looking at an x-ray, and she had throat cancer, and and so, you know, God was warning. God warns us in night visions or dreams sometimes so that we'll take care of that situation spiritually. Amen? So, today I want to discuss the marine 
or water spirits because they are generally the ones who give you the most trouble. They're more intelligent than the servient spirits, the ones, the terrestrial spirits that are confined to grids, like the spirit of cancer. But um, I want you to open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 20 because one of the things you're going to find is that generally speaking, this these type of attacks, especially the one I'm going to talk about mostly today, spirit husband or spirit wife, they occur because of ancestral idol worship. And so we see this, I see this almost constantly with people I pray with in Africa, from Africa. Or you could be African American, you could have been born and raised in America, but because of your ancestry, this spirits can be manifesting in your life and causing you problems. So, you know, if you think about evil spirits and, and the fact that Satan was cast down to earth, you know, the elements, earth, fire, air, and water, Satan's referred to as the prince of the power of the air, but there are also spirits in the water. In fact, Satan has most of his laboratories under the ocean where his demonic spirits and people, people travel there. Uh, rulers of darkness, humans who have given themselves over to the devil, they actually go there. And the more advanced they are spiritually, the more the longer they can stay out of their body. Sometimes they'll stay there and work on something like video games to to keep people's minds off of God and to enslave the next generation. So they might be working on things there, like genetic uh, things that can harm the human race, diseases and things. And uh, an evil spirit could inhabit their body and 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 take over the and, and they could come back and commit all kinds of evil acts through that human body. That they're that's just things that most people wouldn't believe. I know a lot of people from Africa know these things, but very few people in America have any idea the extent to which these spirits, such as Obanjis, inhabit human bodies so that they're really demons inhabiting a human body but it's pretty widespread throughout the earth and it should be easy to understand but we tend to reject these things but the fact is that they do great harm and so there there actually are cities and things under the ocean in the spirit realm just like there are in the heavens where these demons have built built their lives and one of the main ones we run across in West Africa, her name, her name, she can assume the form of a man, but she's called the Queen of the Coast, and she's one of these marine spirits. So there's earth, fire, air, and water, I want to talk about the marine or water spirits. And in Exodus 20 chapter, I mean Exodus 20, we're going to read verses 1 through 6. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Right? That's the first commandment, isn't it? You shall have no other gods before me. Now look look at verse 4. This is interesting because God goes on to amplify this. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. It will be like the sun god, right? Baal. Or that is in the earth beneath. Or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to the thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. And so here we see God speaking about generational curses. And if you're from Africa, your ancestors were involved in idol worship. And generally you have issues in this area. 
because of the idols that your family worshipped for generations until you became a Christian. Just because you became a Christian doesn't mean that generational curse has been broken. Amen? I know many of you know that. Now in Ezekiel 29 verses 1 through 10, God told Ezekiel to prophesy against Pharaoh because of the river, and he's speaking about the Nile, and the idol worship. For example, the Egyptians worshiped the crocodile. And so here again we see that rivers, waters, are involved in idol worship. And if you make an idol of snake or crocodile, things like that, and you begin to worship it, then these water spirits are going to come and they're going to take over and they're going to cause problems in your life till you receive deliverance. Now in uh, Revelation 17, we see the great harlot who sits on many waters. Many waters. And in verse 5, we learn that it's the mother of harlots. And that is speaking about the Catholic Church. Now, if you're Catholic, you may not want to hear that, but it's speaking about the Catholic Church. And the reason she's the mother is she gave birth to the denominational churches who, who today, because of the great falling away, the apostasy that Paul prophesied in, in Timothy and other places that this great falling away would take place, the denominational churches has pretty much followed their mother harlot in in becoming a harlot to God. And how do you do that? Well, you do it by being a prostitute and prostituting yourself through idol worship, money, materialism, uh, politically correct, you know, such as going on in churches today, the people they're ordaining, putting in ministry, etc. And primarily you see it through a departure from the word. The genuine gospel is the word. It's the, do, it's the doctrine of the apostles. So, so the great harlot gave birth to denominational churches, which has now mostly become apostate. Now, in Revelation chapter 12, which I want to read briefly because it deals with the church. And this is verses... 13 through 17. And when the dragon, of course that's Satan, saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. And of course that's Israel. The male child being Jesus. But the woman was given the two wings of the great eagle so that she might fly from the serpent into the wilderness to the place where she is to be nourished for a time and times and half a time. The serpent poured water like a river out of his mouth after the woman to sweep her away with a flood. But the earth came to the help of the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured from his mouth. Then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. And, of course, that's the Christian church, the genuine Christian church. Amen. And so Satan's making war against, of course, both Israel and the church, as prophesied, and he will until he's confined for a thousand years during the millennial reign. And then he's going to cause trouble again when he comes out of the millennial reign until he's cast into the lake of fire. So, water spirits, Obanji spirit, wife, spirit husband, etc., marine, queen of the coast, they have evil intentions. They're mostly designed to attack relationship, to attack the family. They know that the greatest love of God is family and relationship. And so they're going to attack your relationships. They hate God and the human race that he created to inherit what they lost. If not checked, they cause sleeping in church, loss of sleep. They can affect your prayer and Bible reading, a stolen blessings, 
Satan will find out God's released blessings toward you. You know, he sees the angels coming to bring those blessings, and so he begins to contest it. Uh, like he contested the angel that came, Gabriel that came to Daniel for three weeks through spiritual warfare and stolen destiny. They can steal your destiny in God and for God and many other things such as lying, stealing, etc. But there's one big area that I want to discuss in the area of stealing your destiny and that is in the area of relationship and that has to do with marriage. For 34 years now since our ministry began working in West Africa, the three greatest areas where we get prayer requests and requests, requests for deliverance are, number one, the inability to find a marriage partner. That's probably number one. Number two, right next to it, is the inability to find employment or find a job. You know, we have... People write us every day, I can't get, I got a PhD, I got a master's, I can't get, even here in America. We had a young man come to some meetings a few years ago. He drove up from Chicago. I'd spoken with him, prayed with him over the phone. and He graduated and couldn't get a job here in America. And it's, you know, something wrong, my brother. So he came up to our meetings and actually the Lord had me take up an offering for him. We don't ever take up offerings for ourselves, but I took up an offering for him and praise God. So, you know, you can have a good education and everything, but you, you may have an inability to find employment. And then number three is stolen destiny. People begin to realize that their destiny, maybe, and sometimes that's generational. Very often you can see where like the junior brother or the senior sister or someone in your family has their destiny stolen. Women and men alike say, Daddy, I cannot find a wife or a husband. Every time I get close to someone, they scatter. Have you heard that? Do you have an issue in that area? Well, this, this teaching is going to help you. Because I've learned over the years in dealing with such situations and people over and over, you know, spiritual things are like physical things. You know, if I'm going to have my wisdom teeth removed, I want somebody that's done it as many times as I can find someone, not just somebody who just started their practice last week. I want somebody experienced because I know they're not going to cause me as much pain, amen? And they're going to more likely to know what they're doing. And the same thing's true spiritually. You know, you have to be able to identify a problem. I learned that as an engineer. For example, corrosion. You know, I was a certified corrosion engineer. Corrosion can be caused by a number of factors, one of which is microbiological and, and dissimilar metals, a number of things cause corrosion. But you have to be able to identify the problem before you can solve it. And the same is true in the spirit realm. And I found, my brother and sister, the main cause of this is a spirit husband or wife relationship. Why you can't find a marriage partner. Not the job situation, but number one, request we get is people i'm 40 years old daddy and i can't find a wife or i can't find a husband main cause a spirit husband or wife remember my testimony i've given before about praying for short legs how i never prayed for anybody with a short leg it didn't just grow out immediately and then when i went to obin when we started a church in obin which is uh east of Benin City in Sopole, that area, I, I saw all these people, kids and young adults who, with short legs, I mean really short, and I began to pray for them and none of them grew out. And so what do you do? Well, you got a problem. You got to find out from the Holy Spirit. You see, those are eye of the eagle. This is why people need spiritual training in ministry. You can't find the answer to that in the Bible, my brother and sister. So you got to get it from the Holy Spirit. He's the great teacher of the church. You have to develop a relationship with him. You have to see him as your professor. And you ask him, and then he shows you. It was because of covenant. God honors covenant. And that covenant had to be broken before they could receive from God. 
So covenant, God honors covenant. And if the, if the man or woman you are dating has a spirit wife or husband, then they can never marry you, never, unless that covenant is broken. And it can only be broken through deliverance ministry. I hope you understand that. This is pretty foreign to many of you. You know, people, we minister deliverance. We have on our deliverance questionnaire, it's like 14 pages, but we talk about, do you have a spirit husband or wife? A lot of people here say, I've never heard of that. Well, it's pretty common, not just here, but throughout the world. Not just in Africa, but throughout the world. So, it has to be broken through deliverance ministry. A spirit husband or wife will prevent the real husband or wife God has for you from ever marrying you. They will be used by Satan to control you physically and spiritually. Remember, God ordained for the husband to have authority over the wife. A spirit husband will usurp their authority over you as your spirit husband to destroy you. So if you have a spirit husband, you have a spirit wife, you need to get rid of them. And I mean today, don't wait. Now, most of the time when we get this, it comes from people who are single. You know, a woman, I'm 40 years old, I'm 50, I'm 45, I've never married. Very common, very common. Look for a spirit husband or spirit wife. Not just, not just in yourself. I'm going to talk about this in greater detail. But if you're a woman and you're dating men, generally speaking, many of them are going to have a spirit wife. That's why they're not going to be interested in you. <clears throat> but it can also happen to married people as well, either through generational curses or sexual sin. There was a man in the Philippines you know, I found when when you run out of I found in scriptural in First Samuel, when you run out of prophetic revelation about what God wants you to do, then you do what your hand finds to do. And we were on the or I was on the island of Sikihor, ministering deliverance to this missionary's daughter that I had to take off the island because she was going to marry a Catholic man who wasn't saved. God didn't want her to marry, and she was under a she was under a uh, <clears throat> A spell, but I saw the stadium there, and I said, "Hey, let's." Have, we had the first uh, healing miracle crusade ever on that island, and there was only a hundred Christians on that island. It was seventy-five thousand people on that island back then, and the Catholics called us born, the born agains, but there was only a hundred Christians. So we had a crusade, and thirty-eight people got. And there was a huge typhoon came through. I mean, it was. Raining cats and dogs, as we say here in America. But 38 people got saved. A lot of them got healed and delivered. There was a blind man, 90 years old. He, he received his sight. But there was a man there that I ministered to, and he was terrified. He was a married man, and he'd gone down to the big island of Mindanao, which is just south of there. And he'd had sex with this woman, and then she began to come to him every night. What's that? That's a spirit wife, my brother and sister. That's a spirit wife. This man was an African. He was Filipino. But he got his spirit wife by committing adultery. He was married, and he had sex with this woman, which broke the marriage vow. Amen? When you, when you have sex, you've committed adultery when you're married. So he broke the marriage vow, and that allowed her to become his spirit wife. So I was able to minister deliverance to him. Praise the Lord. But it requires deliverance ministry. But just because you're married, my brother and sister, doesn't mean you can't have a spirit husband or a spirit wife. And if you're a woman, your husband may have a spirit wife. And you need to, we're going to talk about the signs of that in a moment. So, even if you're married, you can look for signs that your spouse has a spirit husband or wife. And if you don't deal with it, it's going to cause divorce in your family. This is the primary reason these spirits cause divorce. What is that? They want to destroy a relationship. There are actually witches all over the world who pray against marriage all the time. And the water spirits 
come to destroy your marriage. So you had better be diligent and vigilant in the area of spiritual warfare to protect your marriage. Amen. And if you don't know by the gift of discerning of spirits, then here are some signs that the person has a spiritual spouse. Number one, they have issues in the area of committing to a permanent relationship. They date around. They're very flirtatious. You know, you go out with a guy, he's, he's flirting with every woman in sight. Uh, they're flirtatious with members of the opposite sex. And C, they tend to be involved with other women or men. They can't commit to a relationship a monogamous relationship. And of course, if you were to marry such a person, then they would probably be adulterous as well. They would run around on you. Number two, if married, you cannot satisfy him sexually. Number three, he's very secretive about his life. And of course, if you're a man, you know, you can attribute these to your wife as well. If you're married, or if you're if you're single, and you're and you think you women you're dating might have a spirit husband, his emotions blow hot and cold towards you. Number five, his attitude toward women is not scriptural. Number six, he is critical toward you all the time. You know, has a critical spirit. You can't do anything right. They don't seem to value you as a person. Amen? How many of you have ever been there? <laughs> the reason is he does not see your good qualities because the spirit wife is accusing him before, accusing you, I mean, before him night and day. The spirit wife telling him about all your bad qualities. So it affects the way he sees you and he can't see your good qualities because he's blinded by the spirit wife. Number seven, he is in and out of relationships. Now that's something that I saw in Genesis from Jacob's prophecy. You know, Reuben, Reuben, his oldest, he prophesied <coughs> that he was unstable as water. And the reason was because he'd committed fornication with, with uh, Jacob's concubine. And so he committed sexual sin, and that's a water spirit, unstable as water. And a lot of times people, that's their problem in jobs. They can't keep a job. They, can't, they change jobs every six months. Unstable as water. That's a water spirit involved in your your employment there, destroying your employment. It's unstable. Number eight, and I've only dealt with this a couple of times, and both times it was with women, their private parts smell. Private parts smell. And no matter what they do, if it's a woman you can do, she can do, the, it doesn't matter. Your private parts are going to smell because it's spiritual. <laughs> It's a spiritual thing from your spirit husband because he doesn't want you to have sex with anyone else. And, you know, if you're a married woman, praise God. If you're not married, then you don't have any business having sex with people because you're in sexual sin. You're in fornication. You know, if you, you're dating people, you know, the least of your concerns should be whether they have a spirit husband or wife if you're sleeping with them. Your greatest concern should be the sexual sin you're committing against your body and you better repent of it and not do it anymore because God's going to judge you. And if you continue in it, you'll die and go to hell. So that's the main area. Don't be sleeping around with people. Find your, your husband or, or wife and, and remain committed to them. Amen? Amen. But if you're a husband and your wife's private parts continue to smell, you might be suspicious that she has a spirit husband. Women, you bleed continually or often. A sign you have a spiritual husband, or it can be. You know, I'm not, 
you have to take all of these and weigh them because sometimes it can be something else. But but your spirit husband doesn't want you to have sex with your real husband, so you bleed, you menstruate all the time. And number 10, you're moody with your spouse or fiancé. You're very moody with them. Now, further signs that you're being troubled by marine spirits is in your dreams, you have sex with people. Number two, you find yourself swimming in an ocean, a lake, or a river. Because remember, they're water spirits. <clears throat> I can give you a lot of testimonies about deliverance in Africa from people with these water spirits. Number three, eating in the dream. Number four, snakes in the dream or other water amphibious type creatures such as crocodiles. Crocodiles also a symbol of Leviathan who will come and attack you. And number five, people giving you gifts in the dream. In other words, you know they're not from God. You know, don't ever receive gifts. We're going to talk about that. You know, very often someone will give you a gift and it, it's been prayed over against you. It's going to be used against you. So don't ever receive and anything you buy, especially if it looks demonic. You know, first don't buy it. And, and or if it's given to you, cleanse it spiritually if you want to keep it. So don't accept gifts from people in your dreams or in the physical world. If you need deliverance in this area... Number one, be certain you have completely surrendered your whole self to the Lord. Otherwise, you still have idols. Number two, repent of all sins. Number three, renounce the marriage covenant with your spiritual spouse. Break it in the name of Jesus. And if you need help in this area, you can email us. We'll help you. Number four, renounce and rebuke any future contact immediately in the name of Jesus. And that's true of any spiritual attack you get in your, in your dreams. If you wake up, you rebuke it in the name of Jesus. You know, I've been attacked more than once on trying to give me a stroke. When you wake up and, and someone's in your room, you rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Number five, fast and pray by the Spirit for three days or longer if the Lord leads you. You want to be free from this. Number six, don't receive gifts from people in your dreams or in the real world. Know who you're getting gifts from. Number seven, plead the blood of Jesus over your life, spirit, soul, and body. Praise God. And number eight, this is 1 Corinthians 15, 33. This is a scripture that we tried to teach people in prison because one of the main reasons they end up back in prison is they haven't obeyed this scripture which says that bad company corrupts good morals. Break off all friendships with those in sexual sin or other evil sins. Don't be friends with them. That's going to corrupt you. You know, years ago, we had a woman started coming to our church in Montana, and she lived way up in an area called the Yak, right below the Canadian border. She'd had type 1 diabetes. She was born with it. She was 22 years old. She got saved, and then God delivered her from the spirit of diabetes. What are we talking about? We're talking about spirits. We're talking about being attacked in the dream world. This was ancestral. She never, she had two shots of insulin a day her whole life. God heals her, right? No insulin for seven months. And you've been having two shots a day your whole life. You're healed, right? We got a call one Saturday morning. Evelyn answers the phone. It was a nurse up there, and she knew us. She said, uh, "She said Amy's in a diabetic coma. What do I do?" <clears throat> Evelyn says, "Give her insulin." So she comes out of the coma, and the next morning, she normally didn't get to church till late. 
She's sitting on the front row. So I went down and sat next to her. I said, Amy, God healed you this seven months ago. You've never had any insulin. Now all of a sudden you got a problem again. What changed? You know what she told me? This seems insignificant. But the only thing that changed was she allowed two girlfriends from the university in Missoula, University of Montana, come up and spend the weekend with her, and they smoke marijuana in her house. That's the only thing that changed. You can't have friends like that if you don't want to be attacked by the devil because he'll use everything he can to harm you. And that seems insignificant, but that is a fact that it caused the enemy to come back, gave him an open door to attack her again with diabetes. Finally, for all Christians to repel spiritual attacks in the dream world, before sleeping, you should do the following. Number one, plead the blood. Plead the blood over yourself and over your entire house and property. And I learned that in Africa after I was attacked by those witches in Benin City. I pled the blood every night. I had been lax in that area because I'd only been there a few days when this happened. Might even have been the first day, or first couple of days for sure. But guess what? When I was in Kaduna, that was that was uh, like six months or nine months later. I think it was the second time I went to Nigeria. I pled the blood, but that red witch attacked me, was sucking my blood, which was what made me feel like I was going to die. I, mean, I can't explain how horrible it makes you feel like you're going to die. Like I said, it's, a, it's like the worst case of flu times 20. So I perceive by the spirit it was a red witch. Well, why was she able to attack me? Because she had authority to be in that house. She was already there when I came. Just like that spirit was already in that house in Oklahoma when I arrived. So don't be lax in the area of cleansing whenever you're away from home in places you're staying somewhere and you're not familiar, you, you know, even... If it's a Christian's home, you know, cleanse the room that you're in through prayer and, and uh, oil if you if carry it with you, which you should. But don't be lax in that area because you give the enemy an opportunity to attack you. So plead the blood over yourself and your entire house and property. Number two, rebuke the devil by name. Satan, I command you in the name of Jesus to leave me alone in the dream world tonight as I sleep. I command you, Satan, to leave me alone. You have no right to me. There's no sin in my life, no unrepented sin in my life. You have no legal right to attack me. Number three, ask the Lord to send angels on assignment. We talked about that last time, the ministry of angels. Ask the Lord to send angels on assignment to, quote, Watch over you in all your ways. That's Psalm 9111. So that, quote, no evil shall befall you, close quote. That's Psalm 9110. You're praying the word, aren't you? Aren't you? And so in your prayer, you change the you to me. Watch Lord, I pray that you watch, send the angels on assignment to watch over me in all my ways so that no evil shall befall me as I sleep tonight. Praise the Lord. You pray in the word of God. Number four, thank the Lord for a good restful night in sleep according to Psalm 127.2 because you are his beloved. And you should all know Psalm 127.2. You should pray it. If, whenever you have difficulty sleeping, I said he watches, he gives his beloved sleep, and we are his beloved. Praise God. Number five, you ask the Lord for prophetic dreams or night visions to direct your paths 
so that your life will be pleasing to the Lord. So that your life will be pleasing to the Lord. Praise God. So, I want to encourage you with this teaching that you'll be vigilant in spiritual warfare, especially before you go to sleep at night so that the enemy doesn't attack you in your dreams, doesn't bring nightmares or night terrors. The witches can't attack you or warlocks or Satanists can't attack you in your dreams. Because sometimes, you know, God sends angels into our dreams in the dream world or he appears to us. But Satan will try to interfere with that and he'll try to attack you as well through the witch world and through other means that he can anyway to destroy your relationship. And if you have a problem with a spirit wife or spirit husband, then contact us if you need help. But if you'll follow those steps that I gave you, you will be delivered in Jesus' name. So I hope this teaching has blessed you and helped you. And if we can help you in any other way, well, email us at Christ underscore church underscore INT at yahoo.com and our website's www.ccipublishing.net. I hope you have a blessed Lord's Day today and a prosperous week in Jesus' name. Amen.